Hey there guys and gals and welcome to the super messy D4A garage. Now I have actually given up trying to sort out the mess in this garage. It doesn't really make sense anymore because I sort it out and then it gets messy in about three minutes. I need to make some sort of a system here. But to make some sort of a system to do a overhaul of this garage, I need to make my MR2 roadworthy get it out of the garage so I can work on the garage, you know, do, do things, make them neat and so on. Right now there's very little space because this bastard is, you know, taking up most of the space. Now that's not the topic of today's video. Uh, at the end of the video there will be a little bit of a status update on the whole MR2 thing. But as you can see from the, you know, title of this video, today we're talking about something else and that is the fuel supply of my bike carb converted for a G engine. When doing a bike carb conversion to your fuel injected engine, you are basically doing two big, two big modifications. Number one, is of course the introduction of the bicarbs themselves, which leads to a change in the size and the shape of your intake manifold. The other big change is the change to your fuel system, and it's the change to the way fuel is delivered, you know, to the combustion chambers of your engine. Now, aside from the introduction of the bicarbs themselves, this change, the fuel system change, is the next biggest modification you will be doing. And today we're going to look at it, you know, in some very you know deep detail. Now, why do you need to do system changes to your fuel system? Well, that's because fuel injection runs at a much higher pressure, you know, uh, than carbs, bicarbs, and any sort of you know carbureted engines need. So, as an example, the MR2, uh, the fuel pressure at the fuel pump inside the tank is around 75 to 78 psi. The fuel pressure at the fuel rail is around 35 to 38, maybe even 40 psi. Now, bike carbs and any sort of carbs need around 3 to 4, maybe 5 psi to run properly. So, as you can see, what you need to do is reduce the fuel pressure, you know, of fuel injection to the fuel pressure needed by the carbs. Now, there are two ways to do this. Number one is to use some sort of a fuel pressure regulator. Uh, a very popular choice are the high quality units made by a company called Malpasi. So what this basically means is that you are keeping your stock electronic fuel injection fuel pump and letting it do its job of pumping fuel. And then somewhere down the fuel line you are reducing the fuel pressure by using one of those adjustable fuel pressure regulators I just showed and mentioned. Now, this is okay, but it's kind of complicated and also kind of expensive. To, you know, to get this to run right, you need a fuel return line to the tank and you also need a fuel pressure gauge. Now, this ends up, you know, looking kind of messy in the engine bay and it's also kind of expensive because good fuel pressure regulators, you know, tend to cost around 80 to 100, maybe even 120 dollars and you need to get the good ones because the you know cheap low end ones tend to fail pretty soon. Uh, when you add that to the cost, you know, of the gauge and the other stuff, it tends to be kind of expensive. Now, option number two uh, is what I did. Uh, it also lets you keep your stock, you know, fuel pump, but you do not need a fuel pressure gauge. You do not need a uh, you know return line to your tank. It's also a lot simpler. It works a lot cleaner and it's even cheaper. So option number two is to use a fuel pump from a motorcycle. Now these kind of fuel pumps are cheap, they're readily available and they're easy to install. There is a bit of a catch though and that's that you need to give this fuel pump access to the fuel inside your fuel tank without using any of the existing fuel lines used by your FE fuel pump. Now, I know I shouldn't be saying FE, I should be saying EFI, but it's kind of long uh, and unnatural for me because I'm not a native English speaker, so I'll be saying FE, you know, for the rest of the video and I hope you don't mind that. 
So now, how does it basically work? You keep your FE fuel pump, but you disable it. It doesn't do any sort of pumping of the fuel. All of the pumping is now done by the motorcycle fuel pump. Now, when I first decided that I was going with the approach of using a motorcycle fuel pump, I thought that I needed to remove the fuel tank from my car. Now, there were two reasons I thought that. Number one is that I thought I needed, you know, the tank out of the car to make some sort of a tap or an outlet in the tank, you know, for access to the fuel by the motorcycle pump. Uh, also, I thought it would be nice, you know, to clean, you know, or de-rust the tank because, you know, it's probably rusty on the inside because it's 30 years old. Now, there's a bit of a bad news there, and that's that removing the fuel tank from a Mark 1 MR2 is a huge pain. Ask any, you know, AW11 owner that has done this, and you will see them shake and shiver as they relive past traumas of this experience. Now, the straw that broke the camel's back for me is when I saw fellow uh, YouTuber and good friend 802 Garage remove you know, the fuel tank from his MR2. The man basically did it live as he's uber brave. And when I saw his experience with that, I said, no, I'm taking the lazy way out. I am not removing this tank. By the way, definitely there's a suggested thing here. Check out 802 Garage, you know, nice guy, has a lot of, you know, cars, does cool videos, you know, click there. But not before you watch this video to the very end and share it to at least 20 people or bad things will happen to you. Yes, this is one of those chain mail videos. Yeah. Stupidity aside, stupidity aside, I decided not to remove the fuel tank. And a revelation came for me when a forum member, a fellow forum member of the MR2 board forums called Europa wrote this in my bike carb conversion thread. Is the bike fuel pump an in-tank or external? If external, you can row it a hose either through the top of the tank without dropping the tank or buy a new tank drain plug and adapt it to access the fuel in the tank. For some reason, I imagine he has an accent just like that. Now, this was an awesome suggestion and Europa, thank you very much for this. Because this is what made the job so much easier. So I got underneath the car and indeed there was a very nice easily accessible drain plug you know that you could remove. Now to access it of course you first need to remove the under tray plastic panel things and then remove the drain plug itself which is impossible to do you know without spraying yourself with fuel so definitely wear gloves or glasses or whatever and try not to, you know, get your camera or f all fueled up if you put a camera down there. Learn, learn from my stupid mistakes. So, I removed the drain plug and what I did next is I did some modifications to it. I basically drilled a hole in the drain plug and then had this little, you know, curved outlet vel welded in. Now, the weld actually leaked fuel a bit, so then I used a ton of epoxy to seal it up and now it's completely leak free. Another really nice surprise was that the fuel that came out of my fuel tank was really clean and completely rust free. Now this was great because it further justified my lazy decision not to remove the fuel tank. So after I installed my modified drain plug, it was pretty much smooth sailing from there onwards. Installing the motorcycle fuel pump is super easy. It's just an inline install. You need one hose going from the fuel tank to the pump and then another from the pump to the carbs. By the way, if you have some Honda CBR 600 bike carbs, this is where you need to plug in uh, your fuel delivery hose. All the other outlets and things uh, on the carbs are pretty much irrelevant and you can and you can leave them open. They are basically air vents and some other stuff you do not need when doing a bike carb conversion to a car engine. I also decided to install a little fuel filter, you know, between the fuel tank and the fuel pump, uh, you know, to prevent any, you know, debris, eventual debris coming from the tank to the pump and damaging it. Now, when it comes to the fuel pumps themselves, 
uh, I used two actually. My first one was a really cheap unit uh, you can get on eBay. These cost like $20 and many people say they had zero problems with them and that they're super reliable. Now, my particular individual experience with this fuel pump was pretty bad. Uh, the fuel pump had some uh, internal electrical connection problems and it was randomly shutting off. After a while, uh, it became impossible to get it to work with the little you know, plastic cap on it. Also, I really hated how the pump was loud. Even when the engine was running, you could hear the pump clicking. Uh, so what I decided to do is I got rid of the, of the cheapy pump and I got a used one from a local motorcycle junkyard. Now this particular fuel pump is from a Kawasaki ZX6R, I think, which is also a four-cylinder 600cc uh, motorcycle, just like, you know, the bike carbs, which came from a 600cc uh, Honda CBR. Now, when looking for these motorcycle fuel, motorcycle fuel pumps, you can basically use any motorcycle fuel pump that was on a four-cylinder, you know, carbureted sport bike. They're all pretty much the same and they all do the same thing. They pump fuel, you know, at around, you know, three to four PSI, which is the ideal fuel pressure for your bike carbs. When it comes to the installation of the pump, the location of the install of the motorcycle fuel pump, uh, the fuel pump needs to be installed horizontally. It needs to be as low down in the vehicle as possible, you know, and it must not be above the level, you know, of the, of the fuel tank. Now, my initial location where I installed the first fuel pump was right here. Uh, I wanted to, you know, get it as low down as possible, but this was actually not a good location to install the fuel pump because this, you know, made it very vulnerable to any sort of road debris or stones or something that could easily hit the pump while, I, while I'm driving. That would, you know, rip the pump off, damage it, maybe even leave me stranded on the side of the road with fuel leaking everywhere. So what I did is I got some steel hardware from my local hardware store and I made a little uh, ugly bracket that used the rubber mounting that came on my uh, junkyard Kawasaki fuel pump, uh, which I then just attached to the bracket. And uh, this bracket enabled me to move the, move the fuel pump higher up, away from any you know, road debris, but still on a level that is sufficiently low for it to easily pump fuel from the tank to the carbs. Now, another thing that came with the junkyard fuel pump was this uh, OEM stock Kawasaki little fuel filter. Now, be careful uh, uh, you know, if you decide to retain these and use them as a fuel filter in your fuel delivery setup. Now, I actually took a, de you know, a deep look inside mine and it was really clogged. This can actually you know, cause your uh, fuel pump you know, to get damaged and fail prematurely. So, definitely inspect these before deciding to use them. Uh, the really nice thing about the uh, Kawasaki fuel pump, which, was made, which is made by Mitsubishi apparently, is that it seems to pump fuel, uh, fuel faster than the cheap one and also it is a lot quieter. When it comes to the electrical connection for the motorcycle fuel pump, you just need two wires. One is switched to a volt power and the other is ground. Now both motorcycle fuel pumps, the cheap eBay one and the junkyard Kawasaki one, came with this sort of weird little electrical connector whose other end I guess is on the sport bike. Now I couldn't find a connector like this to buy anywhere so what I did is I cut it off, I got a you know a different you know easily available connector and I simply soldered it in. After that you can just connect it and you are pretty much done with your whole fuel system modification. And there you have it. It's to be honest, really, really simple, it works well, it's reliable, it's cheap, and it's easy to install. Now, there is a bit of a bad news, and that's that if you have a, you know, Mark 1A MR2, which is the pre-facelift model, which I think was produced until, you know, October or something, or July or August or whatever of 87, it's the pre-facelift model anyway, 
Now those do not have the drain plug on the fuel tank. So making this work on a Mark 1A AW11 might be a bit more complicated, but I think it can still be done as long as you know have just a little bit of fabricating skills and you have enough space to work underneath the car, you know, to make the modification to the fuel tank. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the fuel system for a bike car conversion. Now this sort of fuel system will work pretty much on any bike carb converted for AG engine. I hope it all made sense to you and I hope it will save someone time and money, you know, completing their bike carb conversion. As always, if you have any sort of questions, do not hesitate to ask in the comment section. Now, I'll give you a bit of an update on the current status of my MR2. So what's happening right now is that I'm actually tuning my bike carbs. I first ran uh, super rich, then I ran really lean, and then I ran rich again, but less rich than the first time. Uh, turns out I need a few more jets, I ordered those, they are on the way, and I think I will have the bike carbs dialed in pretty soon. When it comes to the suspension, as you know, I got my Coney yellows, all the other components are pretty much ready to go in. Uh, I have also ordered new wheel bearings, uh, new brake pads, uh, uh, full caliper rebuild kits and new brake discs. All of that has arrived except the brake discs. Uh, I have been waiting for them for, for almost two months now. I have called the store uh, about a million times. I got a million different excuses, but the last thing they told me is that the brake discs will be here next week. I hope this is true, otherwise somebody is going to have a egged storefront. So, uh, what else? When will it be ready? When will it be roadworthy? I have been asked that about 75,000 times so far and uh, I'm just as eager, probably more eager than anyone else to have this thing on the road and finally drive it. But obviously it's a damn project car and it's taking forever. A very optimistic view would be this month, the month of June 2018, by the end of June, this is optimistic, the pessimistic version is by the end of July. An even more pessimistic version is never and that I will shoot myself and have myself buried in this failed project. But I hope that's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, we're going to get it done pretty soon. So what's next? Of course, more videos, more stuff, stay tuned as always. Don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe and all of that stuff helps me along, keeps me motivated, you know, to work in this horrible garage and keep tripping on things as I, you know, jump over them. Yeah, and so on and so forth. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun stuff on the D4A channel.